be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to the African Episcopal Church of St. Thomas here in the city of Philadelphia. We gather this morning on this being the third Sunday after Advent. It is also known as Rose Sunday. You will notice that I am wearing rose colored vestments this morning and the rose colored candle on the Advent wreath is lit. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we also celebrate this morning here at St. Thomas, our annual Men's Day celebration. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and for you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalms 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. 
and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Amen. testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites to Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, Then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said, now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
on the occasion of our annual St. Thomas Men's Day, and I am deeply honored to be the 2020 Men's Day speaker. Our theme this year is our baptismal covenant, striving for justice and peace, getting in good trouble. A question for all of us, but especially for the men of St. Thomas. Will you strive for justice and peace and respect the dignity of every human being? This question, based on scripture associated with St. Paul and the prophets Micah and Isaiah, is excerpted from the baptismal covenant that is part of the rite of holy baptism in the Book of Common Prayer. It is part of our Anglican ethos, our Episcopal identity, our Christian character, manifested in our beliefs, aspirations, and actions. The baptismal covenant lays the foundation for and specifies important aspects of living the baptismal life, here and now, wherever we find ourselves, even in this moment. It is our affirmation, our promise, that we will, as Christians have been asked to do for centuries, confess the faith committing ourselves to living out the true meaning of our baptism in our daily lives. Baptism is the full initiation into Christ's body, the church, by water and the Holy Spirit. And our baptism, an indissoluble bond, is created by God with every one of us, making us members of the church, inheritors of the kingdom of God, and full participants in the new life of the Holy Spirit. The prayer book catechism notes that through baptism we share citizenship in the covenant, membership in Christ, and redemption by God. This is also the third Sunday of our Advent sojourn. Advent is when we set aside a specific time to prepare for Christ's coming, both the coming celebration of our Lord's nativity and for the final coming of Christ, sometimes referred to as the second coming or the final Advent. Some ancient Christian rites emphasize a joyous anticipation of Christ's nativity. Others emphasize penitential preparation. The season of Advent joins these two traditions, mixing themes of penitence and joy. Father Jesse Anderson, Jr., Canon Shaw's immediate predecessor as our rector, used to say, I'm an old Adventist, meaning that he focused on the penitential aspect of Advent, defined by the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. 2020 feels like we've been experiencing three of those four last things. To quote the martyred El Salvadoran Jesuit liberation theologian, Father Ignacio Elacoria, quote, a vast portion of humanity is literally being crucified, unquote. We are living in an unprecedented time, a time of great uncertainty, anxiety, and fear. We are beset with a pandemic. Upheaval is upsetting the political structures of our government. Social unrest, both as a result of and in opposition to challenges to structural oppression, is omnipresent. Disproportionately, people of color are impacted due to health disparities, voter suppression, and the police use of deadly force. The negation of justice, peace, and dignity is antithetical to the kingdom of God and denies God's love for all people. In such a moment as this, how are we, especially the men of St. Thomas, called to respond to our baptismal covenant mandate to strive for justice, strive for peace, and respect the dignity of every human being? To quote the words of Mr. Gregory Lyles, president of the Men's Ministry and Fellowship, what will be your legacy? Through prayer unceasing, we will know God more intimately and the power given to us at our baptism affords each of us a spirit of revelation and wisdom to discern how our gifts can best be used to help make justice, peace, and human dignity our reality. Our new life in the Holy Spirit, established in baptism, empowers our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, sustaining us as we seek to impact the circumstances around us that are in need of renewal. The hope to which we have been called through our baptism inspires us to hold fast to what is good and work to change hearts and minds, something which happens through a personal encounter with God's omnipotent power. This third Sunday of Advent is also known as Gaudete Sunday. The term Gaudete is derived from the Latin words of the introit antiphon that is based on St. Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. 
rejoice in the Lord. Always, I say again, rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. This week's message emphasizes the good news that as the psalmist says, God will restore our fortunes, restore us to wholeness. Again, in the words of St. Paul, rejoice always. The kingdom of God is justice and peace. Today's scripture from the Gospel of St. John retells the story of John the Baptist's ministry. He was quoting the prophet Isaiah when asked by the priests and the Levites who he was. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. John continued to speak on popular truth about him to the powerful. As a result, the king seized him, bound him, imprisoned him, and ultimately beheaded him. John knew this message of conversion and repentance would get him in good trouble, but he was undeterred. Today's Hebrew Testament scripture, the oft-quoted passage from the 61st chapter of Isaiah, is the text Jesus read in his hometown synagogue in Nazareth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's faith. Jesus knew this message would get him in good trouble. Hearing him, the congregants in the synagogue were in an uproar. They drove Jesus out of Nazareth, intending to hurl him off of a cliff. But the Lucan, but his path from there leads straight to the cross on Calvary, and the Lucan Gospel says that he was filled with the power of the Spirit. Striving for justice and peace and respecting the dignity of every human being may very well mean that we will get into good trouble. Some examples of how our St. Thomas forebears lived their baptism, left us a legacy, and got into good trouble trying to transform their world. Absalom Jones and Richard Allen, leading black worshipers out of St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church after being accosted during the prayer service. Absalom Jones and others circulating a petition demanding that Congress and the President abolish slavery. Ab James Fortin writing letters of a gentleman of color arguing that not to take the vote from black men of property. Robert Purvis writing appeal of 40,000 opposing changes to the Pennsylvania Constitution that would prohibit black men from voting. Octavius Caddo, fighting for black men's right to vote under the provisions of the 15th Amendment to the United States Constitution. The Reverend Robert E. DeVos Jr. being forced from the Diocese of Alabama for participating with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the Civil Rights Movement, but in particular in the Montgomery Improvement Association that planned and executed the Montgomery bus boycott. The Reverend Jesse F. Anderson Sr picketing the prestigious Lovett Episcopal Day School in Atlanta, Georgia, for refusing to desegregate and admit Martin Luther King III. The Reverend Walter P.H. Parker, marching over the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. The Reverend Jesse F. Anderson Jr. helping orchestrate a black clergy takeover of the General Convention in South Bend, Indiana, that forced the Episcopal Church to address black clergy concerns over the church's response to the black community's call for reparations. Father DuBose and the Reverend Paul M. Washington participating in the unsanctioned ordination of 11 women, the first women priests in the Episcopal Church. Canon Martini Shaw announcing that St. Thomas would affirm marriage equality through the sacrament of holy matrimony. Father Shaw marching in the streets of Philadelphia advocating that black lives matter. St. Thomas's men's ministry and fellowship taking a lead in addressing social justice issues such as racism, police reform, and voter suppression. Their efforts are an inspiration not just to all the men of St. Thomas, but to our entire parish and diocesan family. Question, will we live into our baptismal covenant by striving for justice and peace and respecting the dignity of every human being, even if it means getting in good trouble? If we answer, we will with God's help, we won't worry about getting in good trouble because we know that God's justice, God's peace, God's divine dignity is coming. Clothed with garments of salvation and covered with robes of righteousness, we will rejoice. We will proclaim the good news. We will joyfully live the baptized life in the knowledge that the Lord God 
will cause justice, peace, and dignity for all to be our perfect reality. Amen. Amen. Now, profess our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvations, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We live for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people with all, all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we also remember this morning our president, vice president elect, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. For this city, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of fruits of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphaned, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion, protect us. O Lord, by thy grace. In the communion of blessed Absalom and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our life to Christ our God. To, to you, O Lord, our God. Lord Jesus Christ, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually. To the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and against our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us now present our offerings and oblations unto Almighty God.
sacrifice is offered to the glory of Almighty God in thanksgiving for the men and men's ministry of St. Thomas Church, that they may continue to get into good trouble. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them from the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in Him of everlasting life. And when He shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again, and we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new an unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the pieces. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us our peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. And good morning again as we gather on this third Sunday of Advent here at St. Thomas as we celebrate our annual Men's Day celebration. And I again want to give thanks this morning to our 2020 Men's Day speaker for that dynamic, profound message to us. Not only the men here at St. Thomas, but men who may be watching from various locations this morning. I want to thank Arthur Sutler, once again, for that magnificent message this morning, reminding us to be involved in good trouble. We also would like to take this opportunity to welcome another new member to our church family who has actually expressed an interest, this interest in joining our family this past week. Her name is Angela Kelly, Angela Kelly. We welcome Angela Kelly into our community, into our family here at St. Thomas. We're, we've been profoundly blessed during these past nine months with so many of you who have expressed a desire to become a member of this parish family. And we do look forward to welcoming you personally, in person, soon as we gather as a church community. If you are out there and you do not have a church home, or you're out there and you want a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, we invite you to prayerfully discern a call to this place of worship, this family. Call us this week or send us an email this week expressing your interest or desire to become a member of the African Episcopal Church of St. Thomas. Also want to remind you, if you have not, please folks, if you have not turned in your 2021 faithful giving cards, Vestry is trying to conclude their plans for 2021 um, budgetary um, planning. And if you have not submitted your faithful giving cards yet, it is very difficult for them to do that. So please mail in this week or go online um, this week to uh, preferably make your pledge for 2021. And I just want to remind you, you do not have to be a member of St. Thomas Church to pledge, to give to the wonderful ministries that we are involved in here at St. Thomas. I'm pledging and, and becoming a faithful giver here is open to all of you, wherever you might be. If you want to help us to continue to grow in our ministries, please go online or call us and send in a faithful giving card saying how much you will pledge to give us in the year 2021 toward our ministries. Last but not least, um, next Sunday, we will have a special um, recognition of our church school our church school children and families have been preparing for the past few weeks in presenting us a special Christmas program. So next Sunday, 10 o'clock, you will have a special treat with our church school children presenting their 2020 Christmas program. And of course, as you know, we will worship together again on Christmas Eve. We will celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ here at St. Thomas, Christmas Eve. You may join us virtually at 5 o'clock in, in the afternoon, 5 o'clock p.m., virtually on this page or our website, and then you are invited to come and receive communion, receive the sacrament for Christmas. That will happen at 7 o'clock, and that will happen outside the church. 7 o'clock, Christmas Eve, hoping to see all of you and your families and your friends and your colleagues and your neighbors to join us for communion on Christmas Eve. We will have hot cider, hot apple cider being served to keep us warm during that night of celebration. At this time, I would like to ask the president of the St. Thomas Men's Ministry, Mr. Gregory Lyles, who has um, led our, organ, our group, our ministry here at St. Thomas for the past few years. He thought his term was up this year, but he's been, Re-elected to serve, I think, another term. 
So let me just in, um, welcome, um, present to some of you and introduce to some of you the men's ministry president of St. Thomas Church, Gregory Lyons. Thank you, Father Shaw, and good morning. On behalf of the officers, I'd like to thank all the members of the Men's Ministry and Fellowship, as well as the rest of the St. Thomas family, all of your continued commitment and support and dedication to this organization over the past year, especially during the past eight months when we've been in very difficult and very uh, challenging times. we especially like to thank those who've been uh, working with the organization over the past few months while we've discontinued some of our activities or paused them, but we've continued on with our spiritual ministry. Our monthly meetings have been strictly dedicated to just more spiritual discussion led by Bobby Tillman. But we've also had other members such as uh, Ty Keller, who's also been very involved in leading our discussion and keeping our members focused and on the right path and helping us on our journey, to, journey into staying in the good trouble. Although we haven't been able to carry out certain programs like Men's Men Are Cooking, as well as uh, the annual cabaret, we have been very active with some more social or more spiritual focused organizations such as the symposium that we recently conducted on racism in America. We've also had several members who've been actively involved in the Octavius uh, V. Cato Voter Education Ministry in which we've been uh, very active in just ensuring that we have uh, many of our members as well as those in our community to continue to engage in the overall uh, democratic process. Although these are different activities and they are out of the normal norm, what we do feel is that these are going to continue to carry us forward. These will stay within the overall legacy of the St. Thomas uh, family, and we'll continue to carry the legacy of our rector as well as our, our ancestors, such as O.B. Cato. My ask of you for next year is that we continue to carry this forward, but we ask for even more commitment and dedication. We've always said we need your time, your talent, and your treasure. But we especially like to ask for your time and your talent, but we do want your treasure. But we need those three T's going into 2021. Thank you very much. We appreciate your continued support, and you ask that you continue to keep us in prayer as we go into next year. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Greg. And just want to um, give thanks and uh, recognize two other men's ministry persons who participated this morning. That they are Andrew Dumas, who served as one of our electors, as well as Jamba. I'm going to get his name wrong, I know. Maguanya. Maguanya. Jamba Maguanya. Thank you so much for participating in today's um, service. Also, our soloist this morning is Dwayne Betters. We want to thank Dwayne also for his beautiful ministry of music. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you this day and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.